This chemical agent field demonstration is accomplished by a battery of 155 millimeter howitzers firing a total of 12 standard GB filled rounds into the target area. Impact of the rounds creates considerable dust and debris mingled with the nerve agent vapor which is colorless. As the cloud rolls over the target area, the results are rapidly felt underground. This effect is demonstrated by test animals in the emplacement observed by use of closed circuit television. This is an example of a standard machine gun emplacement. Emplacement. The first volley has just impacted in the target area. The test animals are protected from the high explosive fragmentation effect, so casualties will result only from inhalation of the nerve agent vapor. During the demonstration, pay particular attention to the effects on the animals. You will notice many of the classic symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. The initial symptom for a pigeon is the rapid jerking of the head. The wings will flap and gradually bend back. At that point, the pigeon will be dead. The goats will raise their heads and stare into space. They will begin to salivate heavily, have severe muscle tremors, fall to their knees, and then collapse. The inability to control the muscles will not allow them to rise. Muscle tremors will grow more violent, ending in a flaccid paralysis indicated by the rigid body, arched back, and the head to the rear. Television cameras. The pigeon is suspended in a cage and the goat is secured to the corners of the floor to keep him within range of the fixed cameras. The first volley of six 155 millimeter GB shells has impacted in the target area. The pigeon will shortly begin to show the initial symptoms of nerve agent poisoning from agents penetrating the foxhole. GB is several times heavier than air, and it will enter the emplacement and seek out its victim, which may have escaped the fragmentation effects of the GB round. This fragmentation effect is about half that of a high explosive round. The pigeon is now going into the initial symptoms, as you can detect by the jerking movements of the head. At this time, the goat's mouth is watering profusely. The pigeon is in advanced symptoms as seen by severe muscle tremors and complete muscular incoordination. The pigeon is dead. The goat is now showing advanced symptoms of nerve agent poisoning as his inability to control the large muscles causes him to fall. He is showing the major muscle fasciculations or tremors characteristic of nerve agent poisoning. These will increase in intensity because the cholinesterase enzyme has been effectively tied up by the nerve agent, allowing a large buildup of acetylcholine, which stimulates muscle response. The muscles of the body will continue to be stimulated until a flaccid paralysis sets in. This may be noted by the rigid body and the arch of the back and head at the time of death. Death is a result of paralysis of the respiratory system. The goat is dead. The actual elapsed time for this demonstration was two minutes, 10 seconds from initial impact. The next demonstration takes place inside this reinforced hasty fortification. Any agent penetrating the fortification must enter through the firing embrasures. This is the interior view of the fortification with the test animals in position. As before, the agent is disseminated by two volleys from a 155 millimeter howitzer battery. The test animals are well protected against high explosive fragments as would be enemy troops occupying a fortification of this type. The first volley has impacted in the target area.
The second volley has just impacted in the target area. Several pieces of shell fragments entered the fortification through the firing embrasures. The pigeon is beginning the initial symptoms of nerve agent poisoning as evidenced by the rapid jerking movements of the head. The pigeon is dead. The rapid onset of symptoms and almost instantaneous death was because some of the rounds impacted right outside the fortification. Only 30 seconds elapsed between impact of the rounds and the pigeon's death. This is equivalent to an incapacitating dose for a man in this location. The goat is going into initial symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. He is experiencing difficulty in breathing and saliva is dripping profusely from his mouth. The onset of advanced symptoms will follow rapidly and the goat will fall to the floor, unable to rise. The goat is now in the final symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. In a few more seconds, the body will stiffen and become quite rigid with the characteristic arched back and head thrown back to the rear. From this position, you can observe the constricted, very shallow breathing of the goat. As final symptoms become more severe, the goat will be unable to breathe because of paralysis of the respiratory system and death will follow very quickly. The goat is dead. A reinforced concrete command post bunker is the next target for our demonstration. This bunker is strong enough to withstand several direct hits with large caliber artillery without much damage. The test animals are well protected against high explosive fragmentation effects. In this demonstration, two goats and a pigeon are used. The goat on the left is fitted with a protective mask. However, the air purifying canister will not be in the airflow until nine seconds after the first volley of GB rounds impact in the target area. This will demonstrate the protection of a protective mask if it can be donned within a maximum time of nine seconds. Both goats will be breathing the unfiltered air within the command post bunker for the first nine seconds after the GB shells land. At this time, the air purifying canister for the goat on the left will be switched on and the goat will breathe purified air from that time on. Because of the high degree of protection afforded by the bunker from high explosive fragments, you may not have noticed that rounds have landed in the target area. The pigeon is beginning to show the first symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. The pigeon is dead. On the command post bunker directly in front of the unmasked goat, there are drops of saliva caused by drooling and excessive salivation. These are characteristic of initial symptoms of GB poisoning. The unmasked goat is beginning to show the initial symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. The onset of muscle tremors and lack of muscle coordination becomes evident now as the goat is no longer able to coordinate his movements and remain standing. You can see the saliva and the mucus from the upper respiratory tract draining from the goat's mouth. The mucus and excess saliva are characteristics of nerve agent poisoning. It will develop in the initial stage and should be a tip off to the well-trained observant soldier that he should mask immediately. As the nerve agent syndrome progresses into advanced stages, the mucus drainage may prove an additional complication in treatment of nerve agent casualties. The goat is now well into the advanced symptoms of nerve agent poisoning.
the unmasked goat is dead. The masked goat, who was switched to purified air after nine seconds, is not showing any symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. This adequately demonstrates the emphasis placed on the nine second masking time. An M47 tank in hull defilade is our next target in the nerve agent field demonstration. The invulnerability of a tank to small arms and indirect artillery fire is well known. This is the interior view of the M47 tank. The goat on the left is wearing a protective mask that is connected to the gas particulate filter system of the tank. This system will provide purified air under slight pressure to the masked goat throughout the demonstration. The M60 series main battle tanks are being fitted during production with the M13 series collective protection systems. These are improved versions of the one used in this demonstration. The pigeon is exhibiting the symptoms of nerve agent poisoning and dies almost instantaneously. Remember, this is an incapacitating dose for man. You can also see the unmasked goat trying to swallow the saliva accumulating in his mouth. The masked goat, breathing purified air through his mask, is not affected by the nerve agent that has penetrated the interior of the tank. The unmasked goat is in advanced symptoms of nerve agent poisoning, and muscle tremors and absence of muscle coordination are very apparent. The unmasked goat is going into the final symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. If you look on the floor of the tank underneath the unmasked goat, you can see the large amounts of saliva and drainage caused by the effects of nerve agent on the body. The unmasked goat is dead from the nerve agent that penetrated the tank. The masked goat, breathing purified air from the tank's collective protector, is not showing any symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. You have seen demonstrated the penetrating ability and effects of the highly lethal nerve agent GB on test animals. The armored vehicles and field fortifications used normally give a high degree of protection against high explosive fragmentation effects. You have seen the rapid action of a nerve agent on test animals and noted that without a protective mask, man is very vulnerable to its effects. Field fortifications and armored vehicles do not afford the same protection against chemical agents as they do for high explosive fragments. GB is heavier than air and will linger within these enclosures. Personnel seeking to escape the effects of a nerve agent within their emplacements by going outside would be subjected to the full blast and fragmentation effects of conventional weapons. You have seen many of the classic symptoms of nerve agent poisoning. The massive drooling and salivation, difficulty in breathing and muscle tremors were very evident. Amply demonstrated was the lack of any usable muscular coordination in the final stages preventing an individual from taking protective action, obtaining help, or otherwise saving his life. This program was adapted by the U.S. Army Chemical Center and School, Fort McClellan, Alabama, from a demonstration televised at Dugway Proving Ground, Utah.